Hi, welcome to another Beyond Trust presentation. Today, we're going to dig into a specific feature with Beyond Trust Privilege Remote Access, or PRA, and the feature is called Protocol Tunneling. You can see here in this architecture diagram, it's illustrated down here. And you know, what it involves is, of course, a Beyond Trust appliance, either hosted on-prem in your private cloud or in a Beyond Trust cloud, as well as what we call a jump point. Jump point is an application that uh, can be downloaded from your appliance and then installed on a Windows or a Linux system. And it acts as a proxy or bridge server. And that jump point then, amongst other protocols that it supports, uh, connection types, it also supports protocol tunneling. So that is a bit of the architecture and some of the requirements. So we're going to dig into a demonstration or a few examples of the protocol tunnel jump, how it's being set up and, and how it works. I prepared two examples here for today's demonstration. The first one I'm going to show you is the ability to map a remote port or, or port of a remote system in a different network that I don't have direct access to. Um, I, mapping that to a local port and local IP address so that I can use RDP to the system. Um, so in this example, we assume that this system is in a different network um, behind a NAT, uh, maybe different location, and I want to use RDP in this use case to connect to it. Well, if I open RDP, me working from home, I can't connect to it because the internet is in between. It's not routable. So what I've done is I set up a protocol tunnel jump that leverages a jump point in the network segment where that system is located. So here in this configuration for this particular protocol tunnel jump, I'm choosing a jump point in that network location. Then I'm providing the host name or the IP address of my target system. I'm also specifying a local IP address that I'm using to bind that port to. And then I'm assigning local port 33899 um, and I want to bind it to a remote port on the system on 3389. So what, I, what we're expecting as part of this protocol tunnel jump is that when I activate that on my computer, that it creates a tunnel, kind of like a peer-to-peer -peer mapping between my local system, um, going through Beyond Trust, and then mapping that IP address and local port to that remote host and remote port. So as a result, I should be able to then use RDP to connect to the system over the internet through a secure protocol tunnel through Beyond Trust. So now activating here my protocol TCP tunnel jump to my endpoint. So it's now being established in the background. The software is now being informing me that I have a tunnel session active and that anything on my screen is being recorded. This is part of the security audit capabilities that we have. Uh, this is something that can be disabled as well. But we can now see here that um, the remote address and remote port is now um, connected or bound to this local IP address and this local port. All right, so next, I'm going to use an RDP tool, in this case, Mobile Xterm, and I have a connection here that leverages that protocol tunnel jump. As you can see, I'm just pointing to this local loopback address here in this case and this 33899 port. So if I activate that, it should connect me through that protocol tunnel jump to that remote host, and I should be able to see an RDP uh, login screen. So let's go ahead and execute that. I'm now being prompted here for an authentication password. So that would be the password that's used for that um, RDP connection, providing that. And now we can see that it's starting to connect. And actually, 
it worked, it you know leveraged that PRA protocol tunnel and allowed me to uh, leverage that um, to tunnel through my RDP protocol uh, through that endpoint. So I'm not connected. And again, if we bring up the architecture diagram again, this is me you know, sitting in my home office, I'm connected, I'm logged into the Beyond Trust console and I activated a protocol tunnel jump um, in a different network in a different location that mapped the RDP remote ports of remote host to my local host, to my laptop where I started this whole connection. So now I was able to leverage that connection and actually you know, tunnel through my RDP connection down to that remote host. All right, so that was the first example, um, just illustrating how it could be used. The other example is just leveraging um, simple uh, you know, HTTPS connectivity. So I have another remote host that um, ho that hosts an, an IIS web server, but again, it's in a NATed network. Uh, I can't connect to it from the outside. So I set up another protocol tunnel here. And in this example, you can actually see that this host that, that's hosting that website, that IIS server, I'm actually mapping multiple ports. So also wanted to illustrate that you're not limited to a single port. If you have an application or service, something that you're running locally requires multiple ports, you can do that. You can map multiple ports at the same time for the same connection. So what I'm interested here is in this demonstration is to, to browse to that IS website on that host. So I'm now activating that protocol tunnel jump So once it's activated, confirm yes, we understand we're now connected and being recorded. I'm gonna open a browser now. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna navigate to HTTPS and then see the loopback address 127. And this is also customizable by default, HTTPS is 443. So once I execute that, you can see that now I'm actually, again, being tunneled through that TCP tunnel that goes through Beyond Trust. I'm, it's now like connected to that um, IS host. I can see the, the website that responds to just simple 443 access. I can now interact here with this application and, and authenticate and, and log in. So these were two examples of how you could utilize a protocol tunnel jump. Um, it's really the, the, the sky's the limit here. You know, you being on one end and having to connect to one of multiple services in a remote location, but you can't directly connect to it. And we don't wanna rely on VPN because there's many security risks about it. And you already have maybe beyond just PRA, whatever the reason is, you can leverage our protocol tunnel capability to create these connections that then allow you to tunnel through specific remote traffic and in return allows you to locally run that application, but under the hood, it uses the Beyond Trust PRA connection to tunnel that traffic through all the way down to the remote endpoints. I hope this was useful and talk to you soon.